Today is quite exciting because I'm driving something I've never even seen in the flesh before. What is it? It's a 1970 Prins 4L made by NSU. And that 4L doesn't mean it's got a 4 litre engine tucked in this quarter scale Corvair bodywork. No, it's got a 598cc two cylinder air cooled motor shoved in the back, like a Corvair. The Prins range of cars ran in various generations from 1957 to 1973. This is a fairly late one in 1970, but the 4 generation was revealed in 1961 and pretty much didn't change until the end of the run of production. This was NSU's answer to the Volkswagen Beetle, the Fiat 500, the Mini from Britain, all those little people's cars of the world, but outside of Germany it's pretty much unheard of. And being a German car of the 60s, the build quality is incredible. So who were NSU, I hear you ask? Well, they started making knitting machines back in the 1870s. They branched out and made the first motorbike in 1901 and their first car in 1905. That wasn't a great success and they were pretty much in trouble by the 1930s and sold their car factory to Fiat in 1932, who built Fiat's from the German market until the war. During the Second World War, they built the Kettenkrad HK101 half-track motorcycle um, for the German army. It must have been a bit of a success because after the war they kept on building it as an all-terrain go-anywhere for the civilian market um, and then moved into back into bikes. The bikes in 1957 they built their first generation of the Prins. So why don't I see the badge around anymore? Well it's still around but it's hidden because in 1969 Volkswagen bought the brand and merged them with Auto Union and Audi to become, deep breath, Audi NSU Auto Union AG which was ultimately shortened into Audi. So. This is your late 60s Audi A1. You don't notice how tiny this car is until you get close up to it. As you approach, you think it's just further away than it really is. But getting close up to it is one, two, three paces long. This is tiny. It's a toy car. You could have like 10 of these and park them in the garden like little, little models or something. They're hilarious. The styling must be part of the illusion because it looks so grown up and elegant compared to uh, regular small cars, like a Beetle is so much fun, it's got the big smiley eyes and the smiley face um, bumper. Fiat 500 looks cute as well. But this looks like a grown up car. I guess that's why it is an Audi really. But this kind of sharp swage line and delicate curves around the edge, where the back end comes out like an Alfa Romeo. These kind of indents and curves and convex rear like a Corvair. It looks like a bigger car than it really is. And the styling is pure 60s, even though it's probably designed in the 50s. This boot space is pretty impressive. I mean, this is going to be double the size of a Mini, at least, and probably four times the size of the space you get in a Fiat 500. And the, these were the main competitors. There's your little 12 inch spare tire, your jack set, and uh, someone's left a really nice, I'm guessing, vintage rug in here, which looks quite cool, isn't it? I might, I might keep this. Of course, being a car from the 60s, all the wires are exposed. You can see the backs of the lights and the plugs set and wires that are attached to them and the loom is exposed. It's kind of stuff you just don't see in a car anymore, it's all hidden away from view now. Just look at this little boot catch. Lift it up, it releases, and drop it down and it's away. Pull it up again and click, the boot stays open. On equivalent British Leyland cars back in the day, it would open up quite happily but it had to flick a dirty oily switch half the time to release it because it would jam up. So this tiny, tiny little flat two engine all of 598 cc's makes a whopping 26 horsepower. For all that, it is relatively smooth for a little flat two. Interestingly, even though the coil has only got to power two spark plugs, there's a coil for each plug. Look, look at that for overkill. And incredibly, the biggest thing in here seems to be the air intake and the exhaust. The engine itself is like, diminutive at best, frankly. But it's lovely in here. And the space you've got in here, this would be ripe for an engine conversion. You could put something like a Subaru or a 911 flat 6 or 4 in here very happily indeed. Which kind of gives me an idea. Hmm. This car is for sale. Inside the NSU, the whole big car made small theme really does continue. If you've driven lesser brands from the 60s and 70s, dare I say some cheaper British ones for example, the switch gear doesn't feel so great and the whole layout of things is a bit haphazard. 
looking for the bonnet release, you find yourself pulling things that feel like half the wiring loom coming away in your hand. This doesn't feel like anything like that at all. This feels like a big Mercedes or a BMW from the same era. That same kind of attention to detail, the uh, beautiful steering wheel with the uh, horn ring inside it, the clear dashboard with those three dials that make you feel like a Porsche almost, like an early 911. This switch gear. That's, this is really cool. One click for side lights, second button, side lights and headlights go on together. That is attention to detail. I believe these are parking lights. Nice driver comfort touch because obviously no air conditioning in a car like this. Obviously your main window winds down but also you have rather lovely opening quarter lights. Not bad on a, on a two door car with virtually no back room, leg room. In this car you're not fumbling around somewhere hidden for a concealed front trunk pull release or the release for the bonnet because it's just tucked away neatly on the end of the uh, dashboard just there. A nice little handle and down at the bottom of the um, of the B-post for the for the uh, deck lid. It's all just beautifully thought out and beautifully executed. There isn't a great deal else to talk about in this car to be honest because there isn't much else in it. Um, you do have four-speed manual gearbox obviously. The pedals are tiny, they're like from a doll's car or something. And you have two controls here. One I believe is the choke and one I think might be ventilation. I haven't found an instruction but tell me that. But falling off from Volkswagens, that's probably what it might be. Who knows? Possibly my favourite thing in the entire car is the ignition switch. You have two positions. Halt, obviously it's halt, and fast start, which I don't want to be around for. What really strikes you is how composed and grown up the car feels when you're on the road. It just feels incredibly solid and everything just feels, I know it's stupid to say, but well made. The gear shift isn't quite what you expect it's going to be every time. And the wing mirrors are utterly useless. All I can see is the A post. And even if I could see into it, it's vibrating so madly that I would just be car sick rather than actually getting any useful information from the thing. The steering is really light on this thing, but having said that, there's no play, no bag in it at all. The whole thing just feels really, really tight, like it's a new car almost. The pedals in this car are so light, it feels like you're driving a toy car almost. You almost don't notice you're dabbing the throttle or pushing madly on the brake, trying to make it stop. This isn't fast, but it is huge fun. I'd love to go further in this thing today. So there you have it. One of the most unusual sights on Britain's roads. The NSU Prins 4L. Super. It was rather super. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please hit like, please hit subscribe, please hit the little button down there to get notifications of new stuff. And thanks for watching.